President Biden is making it easier for spouses and children of U.S. citizens to get their work permit and green card while staying here. I feel like Oprah right now. You get a work permit. You get a work permit. You get a work permit. <laughs> So what can we expect in President Biden's new parole in place process where spouses and children of U.S. citizens get their work permit and green card while staying here? Let's talk about it. On June 18th, President Biden announced the new parole in place process in order to promote unity and stability for families. So what is parole in place? And what can we expect in the coming weeks? Historically, parole in place has not been available to everybody, just certain immediate relatives of military members. Parole in place is special permission granted by the government. It's like a special admission into the United States to immediate relatives of military members, giving them permission to live and work here for a period of time, usually in one year increments. This special permission allows them to apply for a work permit and eventually apply for the green card while being here. What makes this extra special is once it's granted, it allows the relative of the military member traditionally to apply for a green card. Because of the way they entered, because they may have entered the country in the past without permission, they did not originally qualify for the green card. But once they're granted this now lawful admission through the parole in place process, it allows them to move forward with getting the green card while staying here in the US. So now this parole in place that was traditionally only for certain relatives of military members will be expanded to spouses of US citizens in general and children and stepchildren of U.S. citizens. I've represented clients through the military parole in place process, so I have some special insight in what to expect and what you'll need to hit the ground running when this process gets launched. So who's going to qualify for this? So one, a spouse of a U.S. citizen. That spouse of a U.S. citizen has to show that they have been married to the U.S. citizen as of June 17, 2024. That spouse of the U.S. citizen also has to show that they have lived in the United States for the last 10 years up to June 17, 2024. Two, children and stepchildren of U.S. citizens. Now we have yet to know whether the child or the stepchild has to apply with the parent or if they can apply in a standalone process for themselves. We'll see in the next coming weeks. Now the spouse of the U.S. citizen and the child or stepchild of the U.S. citizen also has to show that they do not have any disqualifying criminal backgrounds. We have yet to see the details of what that means. We'll see that in the coming weeks and I'll be sure to give you an update on that. Now, the spouse of the U.S. citizen could have come into the country illegally that will not disqualify them. As a matter of fact, that's going to be one of the major benefits of this is if you came into the country illegally or at the border and you were not lawfully admitted, this is going to allow you to move forward to get a work permit and green card while staying here. Now, what will you need to hit the ground running to get this process started? The USCIS is looking to get this started by the end of summer, so we can anticipate August, September. I've represented clients through this parole and place process, and I have a pretty good hunch about what's going to be coming next and what you should be preparing in anticipation for the process. Now, usually with the parole in place process, it requires submission of the application for travel document form I-131. Now, it's not very clear just yet if they're going to create a new form or if they're going to continue requiring the form I-131. Of course, you will definitely know which form is going to be required once they release those details. In addition to that, 
the whole point of the parole in place process is to be able to work, get work authorization here in the United States. So I anticipate that at some point they may require the I-765 form. That's the work permit form. I know you've been waiting for this one. What kind of evidence are you going to need to show to get this kind of benefit? Now, of course, you're going to have to show that you have a qualifying relationship with the U.S. citizen, spouse, or parent. So that's going to include a marriage certificate or a birth certificate. If this is based on marriage to a U.S. citizen, in order to show that the marriage is legal and bona fide, you also have to show that you've terminated all previous marriages before this U.S. citizen spouse. So of course, a divorce decree, if you divorce previous spouses before, or if the marriage ended in other ways like death, a death decree of the previous spouse. I'm sure a part of this is they want to know that the marriage is bona fide. So it's not a bad idea to start gathering documentation showing that you have a real bona fide marriage. Show your joint documents, joint taxes, joint bank accounts, joint lease agreements to show that you reside together. Uh, birth certificates of shared children. Of course, you would not get the parole in place without showing that your relative is indeed a U.S. citizen, either your U.S. citizen spouse or your U.S. citizen parent. And the common proof of U.S. citizenship is the birth certificate showing birth in a U.S. state or a U.S. territory, a copy of the U.S passport or a copy of the naturalization certificate of your U.S. citizen spouse or parent. Now, speaking of qualifying relationships, one thing I wanted to talk about here was the inclusion of the stepchild. Now, stepchildren are going to qualify in, in some way to get the parole in place process. We'll have to see how this process is going to play out. But uh, under immigration, you do have to show that you meet the criteria of a stepchild. And here's the specific definition of a stepchild under immigration. Now, the stepchild has to be at the time of applying under 21, and the stepchild has to show that their parent married the U.S. citizen before they turned the age of 18. So that's going to be very important. The marriage certificate of the stepchild's parent, as well as the birth certificate of the stepchild is going to be very important here in showing a stepchild relationship. Now, additional documentation that has to be shown is proof of residence for the last 10 years up to June 17, 2024. You have to show 10 continuous years of residence here. It's very important to start going back 10 years and gathering the documentation to show you've lived here continuously. Here are some documents that you can start gathering. Your filed tax statements, your filed tax returns, employment records in the past 10 years, like your 1099 or W-2 statements, your bank statement showing transactions in the past couple of years, medical records, school records, lease agreements, and you can be creative with it. This is not an exclusive list. For example, if you just have a lot of friends and family who can talk about the years that they have spent with you, that they know that you've been residing here, that's going to be very creative evidence that you can include in that application process as well. Last but not least is showing favorable factors in support of your qualification for parole in place. Now, parole in place is very discretionary. That means that the officer looks at the pros and the cons of granting this relief to you. To give your application some extra oomph, make sure that you and your U.S. citizen spouse or parent clearly state the humanitarian or extraordinary circumstances involved in why you are deserving of this favorable discretion. 
Now, seeing that we have a minimum of 500,000 immigrants that are going to benefit from this, I have a hunch that USCIS is going to create a centralized location for acceptance of applications. We'll have to see which forms they designate for this type of application process. Usually, based on my experience, the process takes three to six months. And upon approval, the local USCIS office usually issues a letter stating that the immigrant's relative has been granted parole in place. Usually, traditionally, it's for a year, but in this case, they will grant it for up to three years with the authorization to work. And then during these three years, the immigrant spouse or child of the U.S. citizen will then be able to start applying for their green card. That's what makes this close to amnesty. So stay tuned. I will have more updates as it is released by the USCIS. Let's savor this win. Let's keep working towards better policies for immigrant families here.